Welcome to Costa Rica. Uh, my name is Neil and this is the Neil Now channel. And in this video, I'm demonstrating um, correct pruning and um, how to prune to promote the shape of the plant and how you want it to grow. And then uh, additionally, we'll be looking into uh, harvesting vegetables and pruning those accordingly how you want them to grow. Uh, so first off, we have uh, this basil plant right here. And um, this is a very tall basil. And if there's any flowers occurring on the basil, uh, that's the first thing to prune. And being there's no flower, the question I now ask is, what shape do I want this basil to look like? And then, um, I prune according to the shape that I would like for it to be and so in this case essentially I'm going for a very similar shape and as you see here there's some upshoots that are way taller than the rest of the plant and that's what I'll be pruning so essentially uh, can you get a close-up of this so sure. we're going for the leaf to where new growth is beginning. So right here is a spot where I'll be pruning. So that comes off. Um, this one will go all the way back to the main stem. Um, actually, I'm gonna take this whole thing. So I have two new growths coming out here and we're clean cutting to the new growth. Uh, so now you, now you can see it's starting to be more of a uniform shape in this area. Uh, so there's a couple more that are really sticking up. And remember, we're going and pruning according to the new growth that's already there. Yeah, what does that mean exactly? So um, right here is a perfect example. So if I want to prune out this... I have a new growth here, so I'm taking this stem all the way to the new growth and then leaving this one and then that the energy will go into this part of the plant so that will now grow out. Hmm. And so the new growth is anywhere where there's leaves or uh, some kind of an offshoot. Here's a, a nice example. So here is new growth and if I prune this right here that shall turn into uh, two branches that are going to branch off of that one. So that's the new growth I'm speaking to. Cool. I also see how it shapes the ultimate structure of the plant. Correct. And that's the aspect of pruning while harvesting simultaneously. <laughs> and so just a couple more on this one. And this one is looking pretty uniform at this point. And I'm going for a slightly uh, half moon kind of a shape. So it's kind of... Correct. Um, there's some more growth here that I'm going to take. And additionally, some more of this really tall growth that's happening in the end. So I imagine what you're doing is, is visualizing the plant without the new growth. Correct. And then matching as you prune to and that image. Exactly. And you imagine the shape you want and then once you're pruning you're actually um, harvesting to new growth so that's how you determine where you're going to make your cuts so you've got your shape and then you prune to new growth um, so i'm calling this one complete and uh, there's this thing growing out of the middle yeah that um, this guy's gonna go I'm glad we did that. That that yes. bothered me a little bit. What is that? 
That is called Mimosa hostilis. Uh, it's a sensitive plant. And when you touch the leaves, they respond to touch. Boom. That's All right. <laughs> All right, so we're now entering the greenhouse. And as we're walking up, we're seeing these gorgeous flowers. Um, these are passion fruit flowers, and this is a passion fruit vine. And with this one, um, being it's a vine, it's very vigorous growing. And so with this one, you're essentially, um, when you're pruning it, you're taking off entire sections of vine to essentially just most of the time you're keeping it from growing too much because this one just loves to just take over whatever it's growing on. Mm. Um, these flowers are medicinal and there's a way that, so these flowers turn into fruit after they're pollinated and, and they're medicinal, but if you harvest the entire flower, it doesn't fruit. And what I'm about to demonstrate now is a way to harvest the flower after it's been pollinated so that you can reap the benefits of the medicine of the flower and it'll still fruit after you've harvested it. So this one's fully open. I've seen bugs on it, so it is pollinated. And how you harvest this is you have this main central stem and that round part in the middle is what becomes the passion flower. And being it's already pollinated, what I can do is gently pull off the flower around the main section, which is the middle, and that'll turn into the fruit. And it's very important that we leave that part for it to actually produce a fruit. And this is a, it's a delicate process, and I am doing it with my hands, which so it can be done like that. So now, the outside of the flower has been removed and the middle part still remains and this will now turn into a passion fruit and I also now have this flower that I can use for extracts or tinctures or a tea and receive the medicine from this flower. Cool. So now we're moving to the tobacco plants. Uh, these are nicotine tobacco plants. And um, these are already flowering and going into seed. So essentially how we go about harvesting these is we're literally uh, clipping off entire leaves and what that looks like is taking the leaf all the way to the main central stem. And I'll do that right now. And we're taking only the largest leaves. And with doing this, I can take the bottom portion of these leaves and it'll continue to focus its energy up the stem and into the flowers and into these upper leaves which will grow larger and so I'm only harvesting the larger leaves and now this one can still thrive and we can also now reap medicinal benefits from the tobacco plant. Is there a limit to the number of leaves to harvest at a time? Um, there really isn't. Plants are very resilient so huh. Even if I were to harvest all the way up to here and just leave a couple leaves, this plant would still thrive. Mm. Um, although it will focus a lot of its energy upwards at that point. So it'll really be growing tall and reaching upwards. Mm. And what I'm looking to accomplish with these is for them to stay shorter and widen out and then grow these larger leaves and so that's why I'm just taking a couple of the larger ones on the lower portion um, so I, does that answer your question mm -hmm. it does it's 
cool. So that's complete with the tobacco. Um, let's move to right here, the arugula. So these are arugula plants. And with arugula, there's two ways of harvesting the arugula. Um, first off, you can literally cut the entire top of the arugula plant. And then when you do that, the arugula roots out more. So it sends more energy into the roots. And then once it's done that, it'll again send energy to new growth and create more leaves. And this can create very hardy uh, arugula where you'll be able to harvest multiple times from one plant. And what that looks like is um, taking a snips and I'm literally harvesting all these large leaves and so I just cut the entire top off this plant right here. And what you'll notice is that I left this smaller leaf on it. And so now this plant will focus a lot of its energy on the roots and then it'll start growing out this leaf as well as multiple others, which will allow for us to harvest multiple times from a single arugula plant. And the other option with the arugula is to uh, just literally pull it out of the ground. And in that case, you'll only be receiving one harvest from one plant. Um, next we'll go to cilantro. So this is cilantro and uh, these are young plants. This one's slightly taller. Um, here's a nice example of a, a fully developed one. So, very similar to arugula, cilantro, there's multiple ways of harvesting it. And in this case, I'll be speaking to two of those multiple ways. Uh, the first way is you grow it and have it be fully mature. And this is a mature plant. And if I leave this one, what will occur is it will continue and go into seed. And I'm not looking to accomplish that because when you harvest prior to its seeding, it's more tender and uh, it's nicer to add to food. And so one way of harvesting a, a cilantro is to literally pull up the entire plant. And in this method of harvesting, you'll be receiving uh, one harvest from one plant. And then the other method is uh, you can take your pruners and like the arugula, I cut the entire top off of it. So can you get a close up of this mm -hmm. plant? So I literally cut the top off and I left new growth here. And what will occur now is that first it will send energy to the roots and after that it will regrow out this top portion that I cut off which will allow for multiple harvests from a single plant so cilantro excellent <clears throat> um, let's go with purslane so this is one of the most amazing greens in this greenhouse and um, on the entire planet. Uh, and I say that because it has uh, all the omegas required for the body. So all your omega-3, 6, and 9, as well as the others, um, are available in this first lane plant. And how you harvest these is you cut these to new growth. And so right here, I have two stems that are coming off the main central stem. So how I'll harvest it is literally trimming it right above that new growth. And now those two shall grow out and it'll actually create a more full plant by harvesting in this manner. And with arugula, 
or with uh, first lane we're never cutting it all the way to the root and we're mostly uh, just taking cuttings like this and uh, pruning it which will allow for vigorous new growth to occur and this is a plant where we receive multiple harvests uh, from one mm. plant mm. Uh, so that's for you oh thank you you're welcome amazing That was going to be my next question. Is it immediately edible? I'm yes. assuming it is. It is, which is why I gave it to you. Thank you. Yeah, this is, I love this plant. It's one of my favorites. Mm. It's a succulent, so it has very tender leaves. So, first line. Mm. Next, we have citronella plant. Uh, citronella plant is more of a bush type. And... These are vigorous growers and they're natural insecticides. So planting these among the other plants is a natural bug repellent. Hmm. And it has a strong smell. And how these are pruned is by going to new growth as with the other plants and cutting the main central stem so I harvested this, and what's left is new growth coming off of that, which will now grow out and bush out more. So um, by pruning citronella, you can actually promote vigorous growth to occur. Uh, so a citronella plant. Um, we can go to this vine spinach. So there's two varieties here. We have this variety with the red stem, and we also have this variety with the green stem. They're both vine spinach, and these are vigorous growers, and on these we're harvesting only the leaves, and um, I want to see an example of a leaf with another leaf. Right here we go. So you can see how there's this large leaf growing and then there's this smaller leaf on the way. And this is a perfect place to harvest. And the reason for that is when I harvest this large leaf, it's now no longer putting energy to this large leaf. And it's going to send more of its energy to this smaller one, which now will grow into a larger leaf. And so we're looking for leaves that have smaller leaves growing next to them. And, and then we're harvesting those. So here's another amazing example. So this one has like literally three leaves growing there. So that's a perfect one to harvest. And I'm taking it as close to the main stem as possible. So you, it literally doesn't look like there was a large leaf there at that point. And now the energy is going into these smaller leaves. Um, I don't know if you knew you were coming for a salad. But, <laughs> uh, we are harvesting. And Fantastic. So this is <clears throat> vine spinach. Mm. <laughs> I had a question about the citronella. Yeah. It's very um could it, could it be turned into like an extract for cleaning things? Correct. It's like lemony. It can most definitely. It's an insecticide, it can be a cleaner. Um you can make this into a bug spray hmm. that you can literally spray on your body to repel bugs for cool. a natural insecticide. Maybe don't drink it. You can in small amounts. Cool. Yeah, it's medicinal. And with medicine, um, it's it's always important to start with small amounts and then increase the amount you're taking. And um, that is the same with citronella. Cool. Um, here we have 
have habaneros. Uh, these are vigorous growers. Um, I actually just pruned these today and um, they literally had been grown out halfway onto this pathway and uh, typically it's ideal to where you just have a nice open area where you literally don't ever prune these um, and then they just grow into a nice bush and the only reason uh, I chose to prune these here is to have access to this path and another thing that I may do in the future because this is like a in Costa Rica they can be like three to four year plants um, we have nice weather year round which is why peppers can be they can act like perennials and so how you harvest these is by taking it to new growth and the only reason I would choose to harvest these now is to reduce the height and um, I'm liking how they're looking so I'm not even going to touch these and I'm, I just wanted to speak to it sure. so we'll move to kale um, we have a couple varieties of kale here we have this green variety and we also have this purple curly variety and then we have this green more of a smooth variety and all of the kale are harvested in a similar manner and cabbage and broccoli are in the kale family and so you'll harvest those in a similar manner to how you harvest kale and how you harvest it is you go for large leaves and we're literally trimming this all the way back to the main central stem and then what you end up with is a plant so you can see how that was leaves and there's new growth on the way and what happens is where you prune the leaves that now becomes part of the main central stem so with kale uh, with broccoli and with cabbage we're harvesting the leaves all the way to the main central stem and uh, we're only harvesting the large leaves and as a general maintenance for kale if there's any brown or spotted leaves or any uh, dead leaves and usually this occurs on the bottom portion of the plant um, it's of assistance to prune those that way the plant then focuses its energy upwards into the new leaves and promotes new growth up top mm. uh, these are perennials so these are also three or four year plants here uh, in Costa Rica. In other parts of the country they're annuals because of winter but here we have summer year-round and so we can grow kale and cabbage and broccoli as perennials. Hmm. This is really cool considering the uh, the thought system like seeds, flower, fruit, get rid of the dead stuff Correct. harvest all of that and just leaving that there for our viewers yes and we're shaping the plant as we're pruning it and an example I can give is um, if I just prune a kale on one side of the plant it'll be like it'll have a bunch of weight that's going to pull it to the other side <laughs> so additionally when we're pruning we're taking the largest leaves and we're um, if we take a leaf from one side, we'll also harvest the leaf from the other side to maintain a balanced plant. Excellent. So uh, next is uh, this plant. Uh, this is a gorgeous purple um, Mexican joyweed plant. And this plant can be grown outside as it's a very, it's got a really hard stem. 
and so it's able to withstand um, weather and heavy rains which we receive a lot of here um, how you harvest it is so right here is a main stem that's growing up and it's hard at the base but you'll notice at the top it's more soft and this one's actually very hard even at the top so I'm not going to use that as an example um, this one is more soft so if you can see how flexible that is um, that's very soft and how we prune this is we're pruning it to new growth uh, and that new growth can be leaves or it can actually be new stems growing off of the main central stem uh, so that looks like this just a single snip and with this plant specifically we're pruning it to maintain its shape and we're harvest we're harvesting and shaping it simultaneously What's the proper shape? Like we had the half moon with the other one. There is no proper shape. <laughs> okay. Um, the shape is how you want it to be. Uh, I could essentially prune these very low and have the middle be very tall, which would create kind of this V structure. Hmm. Um, I could just flat top the whole plant, which is essentially what we've done here. So it creates more of a uniform look. Um, there's no correct way to prune. You're, well, there's a correct way to prune, but there's not a correct way to shape, per se. Mm. And it's more so, what do you imagine the plant looking like, and then pruning accordingly to what you see it looking like. Cool. So, Mexican joyweed. What's that used for? What is it? Um, food. So this is a vegetable that can be eaten fresh um, as well as raw. Hmm. Uh, fresh as well as cooked. Cool. Yeah. Thank you. It's more strong. It has a stronger flavor to it. Hmm. So cabbage. Um, so we just spoke about the cabbage when I was communicating about the kale. Um, with cabbage, uh, so there's two schools of thought here. One school of thought is I don't harvest any leaves and I allow the cabbage to fully develop. And the cabbage develops in the center of the plant. So these are essentially tiny cabbage heads on the way. And... Now, that's the first school of thought. Now, the second school of thought is as the cabbage is developing, you can harvest the external leaves, which then the plant focuses its energy into the middle of the plant. And you can be eating cabbage leaves while the main cabbage head is developing. So you basically get two sources of food the external leaves as well as the main cabbage head once it's fully developed mm. and that second school of thought is how we're going about harvesting these and so i'll demonstrate how to harvest these leaves um let's go here so you'll notice we have these brown leaves on the bottom and uh these are these are dead, so I'm clearing those out, and that is now compost in the bed. And this one has been eaten by a bug, so this one I'll prune all the way back to the main stem, like so. And <clears throat> additionally, now that we're looking at this, these plants are like growing together. And what that can cause is this spottiness and this yellowing on the leaves. And a way to mitigate that is to literally prune these leaves, and we're pruning them to the main central stem. And in doing so, we've now opened up space where light can get in, and 
um, what that'll do is promote healthier leaves and um, open up for to allow both neighbor plants to expand more hmm. and you'll notice that these kale are the uh, see on I'm seeing cabbage and I'm noticing how similar they are to kale and that's what I'm referring to when you look at these stems when we're harvesting these leaves we're going all the way to the stem and then this continues to grow upwards and each of these nodes was at one time a leaf uh, so just exactly like kale is how you harvest cabbage leaves so cabbage Excellent. Um, we'll go this way. So these are radishes. Um, there's two ways that we can harvest radishes and those two ways have two different results and like arugula and like cilantro what I can do with this is harvest the radish for the leaves themselves so I can go like this and harvest these main leaves and what has now been created is a radish with all of the large leaves cut off of it and there's mm -hmm. new growth occurring in the middle so now it'll focus its energy on the radish and then grow out actually new leaves so radish greens are a salad green they can be eaten raw and cooked and so that's one method if you're harvesting the greens. And then the other method is to literally just pull up the radish, the entire plant. And at that point, you can eat the radish uh, as well as eat the greens. And so that's the second method. The first method is you can prune just the greens. The second method is to pull up the entire plant. Radishes. Excellent. Is there a better harvest if you uh, leave the radish itself later on? or No. Okay. They both produce similar sized radishes. So they have the same result. The only difference with the first method is that you'll receive multiple growths of green leaves. So if you're wanting more radish greens, you can literally just top it and it'll grow out more leaves. Mm. Um, but if you want just the whole radish, you can do that and then you'll just have like a single harvest from the plant. Mm. Um, Brazilian spinach. Mm. So this is a very hardy plant here. Uh, this one grows outside abundantly. Um, What's with all the holes? That is bugs that are eating it. And because we're growing so much uh, Brazilian spinach, we actually are a proponent for sharing our food with the bugs. <laughs> um, so we're not even going to do anything about this. And... Um, the school of thought that I'm entertaining is to grow so much food that there's some for the worms, there's some for the bugs, there's some for the birds, and there's some for us. Uh, so we're sharing with the entire creation. And we're not trying to stop things from eating our food. We're growing an excess of food so that we can share with all of it and still have plenty for us. And then the bugs and the worms, they are, are they're adding something to this ecosystem as well, right? The worms definitely, 
Um, they basically are eating soil and pooping out warm poop, and that warm poop becomes very is very fertile for it's like nutrition that plants can easily access hmm. and most times the soil isn't directly accessible to the plants but with the warm poop that is more accessible and then when your beds are inoculated with mycelium and mushrooms um, this farther breaks down the soil and the components in the soil to create them to be available for the plants to use. Hmm. So um, that went, I didn't expect to go there, but we did. So now we're on Brazilian spinach and how you harvest these is by um, going to new growth. So uh, I'm literally cutting off that portion. And as you'll see, um, there's two new stems growing out here and those two will just continue to grow and so now I have this harvested and it still continues to grow and this can be cut way lower than what I just did so I just cut the very top but this can be cut all the way to here uh, like that and so I, I cut that a lot and pruned it. And there's these two new leaves here. So this will now grow out again. And the only reason for just cutting the tops or getting more of the lower portion is uh, based on how you want to shape it again. And this is an amazing plant. And what's amazing about it is that I can take this now and strip off these leaves like so and take this <laughs> and make a hole in the soil put this in the soil and I can now use the leaves that I've stripped off of the stem in a salad or cooked and now that portion that I just put in the ground will now develop roots and after it's developed roots it'll bush out into an entire plant that looks exactly like this. <laughs> so what we've just done through harvesting we've propagated at the same time so we're literally now growing a whole new plant and we've received food from it simultaneously this this plant's incredible and it's hardy and i highly recommend anybody to grow brazilian spinach mm. um so here we have okinawa spinach uh, okinawa spinach is native to japan and this one is more tender and it has a cooling effect on the stomach and in the body and how this is pruned is by topping it and um, there's a really large one here that I'll harvest and this is going to be dinner for me <laughs> uh, so this is a very long stem here and it's actually kind of overtaking these other ones so I'm gonna cut it pretty far back and I'm cutting it back to new growth and we're literally cutting the entire stem. So I, I just cut that stem. There's new growth right here. That'll continue growing. And I have this. And um, with Okinawa, you can eat the stem by dicing it up. And uh, you can also eat these leaves, which I find very delicious. I'll just take the one. <laughs> oh, it, this is amazing. So it has these really purple on the underside of the leaves. So it's green on top, purple underneath. It's, it's gorgeous plant. Mm -hmm. So Okinawa spinach. In Japan, I think they call it Okinawa. 
Okinawa? That's correct. <laughs> yeah, but it doesn't matter here. That's correct. It's the same plant and a different name. Um, it's actually even spelled the same, it's just pronounced differently. Mm. <laughs> so, this is Bele uh, spinach slash hibiscus. And uh, these are massive leaves that <clears throat> essentially they have a really gelatinous texture to them. And uh, these can be used in wraps, uh, they can be cooked, they can be eaten fresh. Um, this is one of the staples that we're growing here on the property. And uh, Bele spinach slash hibiscus um, is a form of tree spinach. So these grow like 10, 12 feet tall. They grow massive. And how you harvest them is by uh, cutting the leaf all the way to the main central stem. And with this one especially, it's important to remain balanced. So I took a leaf off of this side. So I'm also now gonna take a leaf off of the other side. And the tops are very tender on this plant. And so if you just harvest one leaf off of one side, it, it'll cause the top to actually droop. And so to remain balanced, I took one off the left side, so I'm also harvesting one off the right side. Hmm. Um, this is one that we can eat fresh, and if we want to reduce the height, we can look at these over here. So to reduce the height, um, what I'll do is go to a leaf, where there's new growth and I can literally harvest this entire top by cutting the main stem like so and so now this has been pruned and I specifically pruned it with the intention of height reduction uh, in mind and so this is Bele spinach slash hibiscus it's a, it's a tree spinach are there height limitations to keep in mind specifically that, that you've devised for this one or, or even in general? Not specifically, no. It's more so um, ease of harvest ah. is what I'm keeping in mind. And then another thing that I remember is that when they get really tall, they have a tendency to tip over, mm -hmm. um, either from rain or wind. And this naturally occurs with this plant. So if you don't prune it, you can expect them to tip. Hmm. And so that's another reason for maintaining and reducing the height. Hmm. So that's Bele spinach. And um, with that, uh, this pruning and harvesting tour is complete. Uh, thank you for joining and be sure and touch that subscribe button and, and like this video. and. Uh, share it so that more people can uh, learn this type of content and uh, be using pruners and connecting with nature and uh, eating food that's been grown um, by us. That way we have a direct connection with where our food's coming from and the nutrition that's in our food. Uh, I love you. Peace. Love you too. <laughs>